Hey, I'm Tass Mellis, and this is what you need to know in the NBA for Tuesday, January 5th. The first thing you need to know is... Stephen Curry and the Warriors! Yes, the Warriors look fantastic. Why am I starting with the Warriors when they beat the Sacramento Kings by 31 points? Well, I think they deserve a little bit of extra love after people wrote them off when they started the season 0-2. They now sit 4-3, and and they could be the most entertaining team in the league. Of course, Steph Curry leads that entertainment. He had 39-8 and eight against the Kings. Andrew Wiggins, put some respect on his name. He is shooting 39% from three this season, which would be a career high. Kelly Oubre, four of six from three in this game. He was two of 30 from three-point land coming in, doubling his total. And despite those numbers, he is the most arrogant three-point shooter, blowing kisses out there like he's Lee Ellis. I got to give a lot of love to Draymond Green. Green has played three games this season and scored a total of six points. That's two points per game. But he's got 17 assists. He's setting up guys. And of course, the defense, as the Athletics' Marcus Thompson points out, he makes a huge difference on that end. And he brings the fire. He is their heart and soul. Look at him. Look at him bringing that fire. Andrew Wiggins needs that in his life. And speaking of arrogance, he is the most arrogant smoothie drinker I have ever seen. Look at him. That could be the most entertaining clip all year in the NBA. And it's just a man drinking a smoothie. This could be the most entertaining team, as I said. It's fun when the Warriors are good. Just like what people say about the New York Knicks. So far, I think the Knicks are the surprise of the season. They beat the Hawks and now sit at 4-3. and three. The Atlanta Hawks gave up a double-digit lead in this one for the second consecutive game. I'm not sure how it happened. Because the Knicks starters hit 1-3 combined. Although Julius Randle had 28. R.J. Barrett had 26. And they were down double digits in the third quarter. And their bench helped turn this thing around. Austin Rivers, Kevin Knox, and Emmanuel Quickly. A rookie out of Kentucky that Tom Thibodeau was playing the entire fourth quarter, basically. Tom Thibodeau saying, F it, I'm going for it. I've got a tight rotation. I don't care. Austin Rivers tried to tell us that this team was going to be good. They might not score enough, but they look like they are going to play hard. They have a top 10 defense as advertised for a Tom Thibodeau team. The Hawks also sit at four and three. Atlanta blew a second consecutive double digit lead, but for some reason, I'm not so worried about the Hawks. Maybe it's because they didn't have a bunch of their guys down the stretch. Bogdan Bogdanovich was hurt, didn't play in the fourth quarter. Danilo Gallinari is out. Rajon Rondo sat on the bench. Was a healthy scratch, just didn't play in this game. I think it's just a young team finding their way. One team I am worried about, the Toronto Raptors. They lost to the Boston Celtics, and it wasn't close. This was supposed to be a marquee game. This was supposed to be a benchmark game for the Toronto Raptors. And it started pretty well. The sixth consecutive game to start the season for the Raptors where they had a double-digit lead. But they now sit at 1-5. and five. And the problems are long. They start with Pascal Siakam, though. If Siakam was playing to his capabilities, those other problems really wouldn't matter. Siakam was an all-NBA player last season. Doesn't look like it at all. He just doesn't have the confidence. He gets two feet in the lane and is looking to pass a bunch. Although this game was better for Pascal Siakam, he is just not playing to his capabilities. He's playing with two small guards who can't get to the rim. Him, OG Ananobi, and Aaron Baines as a front line have got to do better for Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet. And then the bench comes in and they struggle. The Raptors have the third worst offense in the league. This is how bad it got. The second half, Alex Len started in place for Aaron Baines. Baines has definitely struggled. And it's official. Len and the Raptors have stole my sunshine. And I'm okay making that joke. I've been in the Alex Len corner since he was drafted in 2013 so i'm fine making that until he is retired listen the raptors don't have a home they're playing in tampa the fans in amelie arena are more neutral than anything some of the 3700 in attendance were chanting for boston's tackle fall to enter the game in the third quarter not even the fourth in the third thanks to blake murphy of the athletic for that info they have flown a lot not playing more than one game in a city and now they're off for a four-game road trip in six nights on the West Coast. As Fred Van Vliet said, and as I just did, the Raptors can make plenty of excuses. 
But they're not making those excuses. One thing Kyle Lowry said that he's learned after six games, it's a fine line between being good and bad. Preach, man. It is a very fine line. The reps look great and not so great in the same game. One thing that did give me sunshine, Jalen Brown posted a video of his teammate Peyton Pritchard after the game, the former Oregon Duck, looking like a bit of a duck dancing in front of the fridge. Yeah, there's some duck-like qualities of Peyton Pritchard right there. That team feeling good on that end. One guy I was a little worried about, which I shouldn't have been, Luka Doncic. Doncic returned after a one-game absence, and Dallas beat the Rockets in a 13-point win. We talked about him yesterday here on What You Need to Know. He isn't in tip-top shape, but he looks so good in this one. He had season highs across the board with 33 points, 16 rebounds, and 11 assists. Doncic now has three of the five 30, 15, 10 performances in NBA history by players younger than age 22. The others were Oscar Robertson and Magic Johnson. See, now it feels like last year, like normal Luka times. I give you a stat and it just washes over you. Why I included it, I don't know. Thanks to ESPN and Elias for that. Mavs coach Rich Carlisle, he addressed that Doncic is kind of behind the curve. And it just takes one mention on what you need to know for a guy to snap back. Mavs took care of business against Houston. The Rockets' effort just wasn't good enough. They are 2-3. and three. They could be good with the amount of talent they have, but they are not. Am I jumping to a conclusion after one game? Yes, but they just don't look that cohesive. When is this James Harden trade going to happen? It's got to happen soon, right? One guy many thought was going to be traded, Indiana's Victor Oladipo. He played a big part in the Pacers' wild comeback over the New Orleans Pelicans. Down six, under 30 seconds left, means a team is usually done. Here's a stat you are actually going to like. Teams that were up six points with less than 25 seconds left only lost twice in over 8,000 games the past 10 years. It's supposed to be a lock, and it happened to the Pelicans. Thanks to ESPN for that stat. 20 seconds remaining. The lead was six when Victor Oladipo made a three. Forced to steal, and Miles Turner tied it for the Pacers to send it to overtime where they beat the Pelicans. Victor Oladipo looks real good. Another year removed from that injury. 21 points per game, 45.5% from three on seven attempts. He's making huge plays. What is this man going to make in the offseason? He just upped that free agent class a little bit. Although it seems like Oladipo loves it in Indiana, right? He, He seems like he's really enjoying it. But lots of rumors that he is going elsewhere. Stan Van Gundy, Pelicans head coach, blamed himself for the late turnover. All four Pelicans turnovers in the fourth happened in the backcourt. That is a game the Pelicans got to win. The Pacers are 5-2. Speaking of standings, the 76ers have the best record in the NBA at 6-1. So why haven't I mentioned them until this point? Well, they have no real marquee win on their schedule. Sorry, Knicks. Not yet. Sorry, Raps. Not this season, and it's disappointing because the Sixers play the Nets on Thursday, but Kevin Durant will not be suiting up. Kevin Durant has been in contact with someone who recently tested positive for COVID-19 and will miss the next four Brooklyn Nets games. He had the virus in March and is registering antibodies, so he's likely immune, but the NBA's COVID-19 protocols don't distinguish between those who have had the virus and those who haven't. Even though KD doesn't currently have the virus, he's going to miss the next four, including Philadelphia, on Thursday. That's a bit disappointing. That's it for me. Make sure you check out the full No Dunks episode today. I'll be back tomorrow to give you the news as fast as I possibly can. And may the haters fuel you like they're fueling Paul George this season. Happy voting day, Georgia. Love.